I said, there's seven core vulnerabilities that we experience. I told myself, oh, it was my fault because I learned that when you're born, you have birthmarks on your body. I have a very big birthmark on my leg. And I went, that's it. She saw my birthmark and she didn't want me. That was what was wrong with me. I wasn't wantable. There was something wrong about me. When you have a kid who red flags are, they take everything personally. They cannot receive constructive criticism. When you point out a mistake, they think they're the mistake. They're all wrong. This is a red flag. You do have a child who is experiencing shame. Shame is directed towards the self. Guilt is directed towards the behavior. So if we don't work through shame, shame will impede the ability for that child to develop healthy guilt. This is why adoptees and foster youth have what's called a narcissistic wound because they're sitting in this stuff and it is all about them because nobody's helping them separate from it, learn from it, see what happened to them, what caused them to feel this way. It feels like this, they're in a bubble and there's a mirror in the bubble and all they see is their bad self. And what happens is parents misperceive this as they have no empathy, they're gonna grow up and be a sociopath. That negative assumption, oh my gosh, she has no empathy, she can't apologize. And she just hit her brother and he's bleeding. Reframe therapeutically, this is what's going on. Shame experiences the self is all bad, worthless, unlovable. The person feels as little they can do to fix it. This is the core of who they are. As a result, they're likely to deny, lie, make excuses or blame others. I'm not gonna take responsibility for this because if I actually take responsibility, that me taking responsibility that I'm all bad. They can't differentiate themselves from their behavior. So excessive shame prevents the development of guilt, prevents them from accepting responsibility for their actions. Individuals who are rated on high measures of shame are rated low on measures of empathy for others. So individuals who experience guilt readily and wrong rated high measures of empathy. That's from Attachment Focused Parenting book by Daniel Hughes. When you, and I don't like this word, oh, but I'm gonna say it, force a child to apologize, right? Because we're parents. I need to teach my child responsibility. They need to acknowledge what they've done. If I don't do that, then I'm not being a responsible parent. But here's what happens. When you force a child who has shame to go apologize to their brother, that child's gonna fight you. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be a control battle, big time. They're not gonna do it. Why? Because what we're doing is saying, I want you to reinforce how bad you are, go. So we're telling a child, go to your sister and say, and I, I usually act this out, I'll act it out for you today. Child goes, mm, and the parent usually has some consequence. If you don't apologize, you're not gonna have ice cream after dinner. If you don't apologize for throwing the phone, you're not gonna get your phone back. That child's gonna hem and haw and come to you and go, I'm sorry, and be really mad about it, nasty about it. What are we really doing? We're telling them to say, I'm sorry, I'm so bad, because they can't separate themselves from their behavior. It's all one. So the treatment, there's treatment for this, don't worry is separate the child from their behavior. The, the sandwich metaphor, which I'm calling the shame witch. No. We wanna separate the child from the behavior. I, we love you, and we're gonna put all the emphasis on the behavior, but not on the person. We're gonna put all the love on the person. We love you, you are important, you matter, you're a good person. What we don't love is kicking the dog. We all matter here. You're important to the dog. The dog is important to you. That's what we don't love. So the shame which goes like this. The bread on the bottom is the good stuff. You are a good person. You matter. You're important. You're valuable. And then the inside stuff, the fixins, the lettuce, the pickle, the tomato is where we're going to put the problem. It's all out here. Put the problem, the fixins to separate it from them. This is the mistake. And we're gonna figure out this. And this is a form of narrative therapy that I'm teaching you. It's a technique for separating the child and putting it in the story of the problem outside of them so that they can begin to have what's called objectivity. 
When we have objectivity, we have awareness. When we have awareness, we can change. And then the bread on top is, you're a good person. You got this. You're gonna get through this. We, us, apply this to your child, apply it to yourself. How hard are we on ourselves? Stay therapeutic, we're gonna build the trust, build that secure base, reinforce, assure them over and over how valuable you are. And we're gonna work on this together. We're gonna get through this. So, I hope you like this intervention. It truly works. And it changes your whole approach because you see a different child.